Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. All, oh, oh Lord, have mercy on us this evening. Pastor, the congregation sound like they really had a rough, tough, crumbled up week. What do you think? Well, based on how they sound, yes. let, let me see if I could have them do better do, than do, that. Try happy again. Sabbath, church. How is that, Ruth? A little better, but I think we could do better than that. You try. No, you know what? I think we'll leave it as it is for starters. They're, they're listening. They're in attention. And our viewers online yes, are jumping and, and they up and seem down to for be joy. So lively. Look at that. We've got a whole lot of happy Sabbaths online. Happy Sabbath, those who are online. It looks to me, uh, Ruth, like Jim Campbell was the first online yes, this evening. From Canada. From Canada. Happy Woo. Sabbath to Canada. Where are you from? I'm interested uh, to know where they're from. Yes. You're, you're online. I want you to drop it in the chat and tell us exactly where are you from, which country, which zone are you from, and from each Jamaica conference. And if you're from another conference, drop that in the chat. I'm happy today, Ruth. But hold on. You know what? I want to know about the persons in the sanctuary. Go All ahead. the persons Go ahead. from zone one. Please stand. If you are from Zone 1, come on. The praise on, team zone is one. from Zone 1. Zone All 1 right. is in the house. Amen. Zone 1 is in the house. Look at that. Young oh, Brother Taylor says. That's right. Oh, you're from Zone 3, Brother Taylor. Don't get it right. <laughs> get it right. Those who are from Zone uh, 2, where are you? Wow. Zone 2 is in the house. Zone, zone two. 2 is in the house. Zone 2, are you online? Online is saying I'm from Zone 1. Zone Oi. 2, coming in on the chat. Where are those? And you, I have to say this one because Please. I'm from this zone. All right, Where are those persons who are from the mighty, mighty <laughs> Zone 3, which is led by Pastor <laughs> Anthony Taylor? Where are we? All you right, heard so us, you heard us, members, you heard us. Up, Just a castle with that uh, uh, you know, Queen's wave. Of course, yes, we are here. Course, oh, zone course. 3 is well represented, Rose. And last but certainly not least, Zone 4. All the members of Zone 4. Let's zone see. 4. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. They are traveling all the way from St. Thomas, Thomas, and they are in the house. Everybody, yes. give Zone 4 a round of applause. They deserve it. They, deserve they have it. trod those rugged roads, and they are in the house to give God some praise. We are yes. in for a great Sabbath. Riddle me this route. Uh -huh. Riddle me that. Yes, Guess sir. me this riddle and perhaps, perhaps not. not. Which day is the best day of the week? Hmm, hear me now. The, 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 the saints are answering. Your puzzle route. Let the church answer. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Give, give those online a chance to pose for us. Those okay. online. A delay. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Guess me this riddle and perhaps not. Let's tell our preacher, Kirk Thomas, from England, which day is the best day of the week. Online. Send that in the chat. We thank you so much coming in from all London. Sending in the chat, we have Fiona Hyatt Williams coming in from Shortwood. We have Zone 1, Zone 3, CJC yes. is in the house. Joyce Malcolm, we are in for a great time. The praise team is standing by. Yes. What a night it promises to be. You know what, Ruth? We've been having a great time with the evangelists. And you know what I love the most about Tell me. Friday evenings, Friday afternoons, is the thought that I will be able to spend the next 24 hours worshipping the King of Kings, the Lord oh, of Lords. Oh, ain't that something? All the trials and ain't the tears something? and the stress just melts. Wow, wow. You just know how to put melts. things. You do know how to put things. We're putting our cares and fears behind us. We're putting all our troubles behind us. Yes. And we're about to have another 24 hours That's in an right. intimate way with our Lord and our Savior. The evangelist, Pastor Kirk Thomas, has another powerful word for That's us tonight. Right. And remember, remember, our camp meeting 2022. It never ends. Mission first, navigating the end time. No. Now that the trials and tribulations of the week have melted, we have crumbled upon them. When the cord is struck, 
We are not going to be a part of the chosen, frozen. Mercy. Are we? You're saying that a little bit too soft. All right, say it again. In we are me, saying please. that today are the Sabbath day. Yes. And nobody in the house uh -huh. must be a part of the chosen, frozen. frozen. Get up, praise the Lord. You ought to give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Every praise is to our Lord. And those online are pouring in the chat room. Oh, yes. Oh, they yes. say that the seventh day is the best day. The Sabbath day is the best day. It's all coming in. These are bright people. St. Vincent in the house. Trinidad, Ruth in yeah, the house. Over, Look at that. Canada over. in the house. United States of America in the house. Preacher. You have people all over the world online ready to hear from God. Multinational, Multinational. meeting we have. Look here, the man. Our time should be up now. And That's the praise all right. team Let's go. is We're ready go get to ready. sing some Sabbath praise that we shall lift our voices together. Ruth, what are you expecting tonight? I'm expecting to be blessed over and over and over. Full hundred because I have to share it with somebody else tonight. And you see, when I share my 100%, that's the perfect math. I'll always have 100% left. Mercy. Praise Steve. With that said, with that said, remember, share the link. Send it to somebody. Send it to a friend. The friend you send it to this evening just might get a life-saving message. You are. Be a digital disciple. Ah, be an uh, Apple apostle. Wait. Before the praise team comes on. Reminding those online and in the sanctuary, we have a powerful activity taking place in the upper room. The prayer band is at oh, it. So, brothers send and sisters, your prayer request post in. your prayer request send your in prayer the request chat. In. Thank you for that. Yes. Ruth. Thank you so much for that. They're on their knees as we speak. Send those prayer requests in. Amen. We're here to have a great day of worship with God. We're handing over to our praise team. May the Lord add blessing to your soul as you worship with us in-house and online this evening. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's do this again. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's so good to see you all. You don't even know how lovely you look out there. And I realize we're here from all over our conference. And just like we are gathered here today to sing some songs of praise and worship, our praise team is from all over our conference today. And so we want you to join with us as we sing hymn number 388 as we welcome the Sabbath with this one. Don't forget the Sabbath. The Lord our God has blessed. Let's go. Don't forget the Sabbath, the Lord our God has blessed. Of all the week, the brightest, of all the week, the best. It brings repose from labor. It tells of joy divine. It keeps of light descending with every Everybody sing it. Welcome, welcome.
we feel it. No, no, see, it's like Sabbath, you know. And so we bask in the blessings of the Sabbath. And we're continuing to bask in the blessings with him. Number 462, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hymn number 462. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Oh, what a foretaste. No glory divine. No salvation. No salvation. Purchase the love. Born of his spirit. Born of his spirit. Wash in his blood. We're going to praise him this evening, ever in joyful song. Amen. Let's go. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed redeemer. Sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, eyes like angels in glory. For our sins, for our sins, He 
So let us praise Him. Oh, oh, oh. the praise this evening.
Heavenly Father, the giver of life, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful Sabbath day. Thank you for the day of rest and gladness. Thank you, Lord, for having brought us here to worship you today, to exalt your name, to say, indeed, we know that we have a Savior who is pleading in glory, and his name is Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for taking us through another week of toil and labor. Thank you for bringing us into this oasis in time. And so, Father, we acknowledge your presence with us tonight. And we ask that as we bow humbly at your footstool, heaven will come down and glory will fill our souls. Bless your waiting congregation tonight. Bless your evangelists tonight. Bless the message, we pray. Bless those in cyberspace. And we know, Lord, that angels will fall their wings because they can't sing the song which we will sing, the song of redemption, the song which has told us that, yes, yes, indeed, the signs of the times are everywhere. And one day soon, King Jesus, King Jesus will come down to take his people home. We pray, Lord, that none who will hear this message tonight and none who would be on cyberspace or anywhere other space who have listened thus far and will be listening to the rest of our presentations here at camp meeting, that we all will be found faithful because you would have helped us to endure to the end and indeed we'll be saved because we'll hail you as our Savior and our King. This is our hope that is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. What does God people say? Amen. Amen. Say that one more time. Amen. We praise God. What an awesome privilege it is for us to be gathered together in this beautiful setting at this, the start of another Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Pastor Merrick Dale Walker, President, East Jamaica Conference. Pastor Melvin Francis. Elder Michael Porteus, prophet of God, the man with the message for this time, Pastor Dr. Kirk Thomas, and I could go on. Pastor Shaw, it's good that you have opened the door and the provisions of the Kenkot Church that we are here praising God together. It's my pleasure and distinct privilege this evening to extend welcome to everyone who is present. Those who are in the house and those who are joining us online. It is certainly a wonderful opportunity for us to be gathered together and to know that we are in the very presence of God. Would you not say amen? And Christ welcomes us. He has called all of us to lay aside our burdens and our cares and to come into his presence and celebrate the goodness of God as we navigate end times with a focus of what? Mission first in this age. After covid the world pandemic, after all the circuitous meanders that we have been through and we are going through, we know that if ever a time we need to have our focus right, it is now. Amen? Mission first, as God has assigned us. We have been having a tremendous time um, from Wednesday evening until now. And tonight we are up again for another great watering from the Holy Spirit. On behalf of our leadership, on behalf of the members and staff of the East Jamaica Conference team, leaders, and the members of this august body of Adventists across Kingston and St. Andrew and St. Thomas, and our friends far and near, it is my pleasure and privilege to what? 
welcome you. And, and I welcome even those who are coming in from abroad. I saw one Pastor Carl Cunningham coming from Canada. Yes, um, he is the son of Sister Sandra Cunningham. And it's nice that they, they, they've left so far and they, they are here tonight. We just praise God. And we are going to have a wonderful time as we, we, we are kept with good music as usual. God bless you tremendously as we worship together, everybody here and on the line. Thank you. Just to set another criminal free Just to say When they crucify the ever-loving Caring master with compassion flowing from his eyes Well, he said to a thief who was begging him for mercy That today you live in paradise Oh, I'm saved I'm saved Like the criminal on the cross Praise God, I'm saved I'm saved No more to suffer loss They say that to live in paradise Taken care of the cost Criminal on the cross. Well, on the judgment day, when all the people gather around him and the way to hear what he would do, what did he do? There declare? will never ever be that could ever happen anywhere. Happen anywhere. Oh, when they call my name to defend my reputation, there is only one thing I can say I'm a wretch, I'm a worm, I'm a no good sinner. But you said I said, I said you, you gotta believe that I'm saved. I'm saved, I'm saved like the criminal on the cross. Praise God, I'm saved. Well, I'm, saved. Yeah. I'm saved. No more to suffer loss. You said I'd live in paradise. Ooh. Taking care of the ghost. Hallelujah, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved like the criminal on the cross. Well, don't you know that I'm saved? I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Through Jesus, I'm saved. Well, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. His mercy show the way. Well, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. No more for me to say, no more for me to say. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved in paradise today. Well, it was many years ago in the time of the Bible that they took him up to Calvary. Up to Calvary. They could have let him go, but instead they chose Barabbas just to set another criminal tree. Just to say, but when they crucified the ever loving Karen Master, compassion flowing. From his eyes, but well, he said to a thief who was begging him for mercy that today you live in paradise. Oh, but I'm saved, well, I'm, saved. I'm saved like the criminal on the cross. Praise God, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. no more to suffer loss. He said I'd live in paradise. And he's taken care of the cost. Hallelujah, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved like the criminal on the cross. Cross. Amen. Amen. Worship. Yes, worship. Worship is the highest experience possible to man. And it is indeed a privilege when as a community of Advent believers we can gather together on the Sabbath to worship. Amen? Giving, and giving in a manner commensurate with God's blessings on us is an integral part of worship. And so we are now going to worship with our offerings. The offering we give tonight is used to resource the mission. The theme that we're working with is mission first, navigating the end times. And our offering of worship will go towards resourcing the mission. 
as we prepare to prayerfully worship with our offerings, I encourage us to be very deliberate and intentional. Perhaps it might not be a bad idea for you to look to your left and to your right, Pastor Williams. And if there is a vacant seat, you might want to contribute on behalf of the person who should have been there. Amen? Let us be very intentional. Let us be very deliberate in our worship. Shall we bow our heads? Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity, the privilege that we can give and give generously of our means. We pray that even as we give of our means, we will give of ourselves. And as a man purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God still loves a cheerful giver. taken from 1st Peter 2 verse 9 and 10 but it will be done a little differently and we hope that as we minister in this way that you'll be blessed by it we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you might proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, his marvelous light. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. But now have obtained mercy. First Peter 2, verse 9 and 10. 
First Peter 2, verse 9 and 10. That's beautiful. The word of God is so sweet. They were found, and I did eat them, and they were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I saw that coming out past the jump in that presentation, and I've been feeling that. Night after night, what do you say? Pastor Williams, our former executive secretary. I tell you, if you've been coming and if you've been online night after night, by now you begin to be saturated with power. Amen? You, you are developing passion. And you have the right perspective. Is it not so? Uh, my friends, I tell you, the man of God has helped us to get our perspectives right. Amen? And that is why I am happy to introduce again to you the same man that God raised up before he was formed in his mother's womb in Guyana. Hallelujah. And brought him through the various circumstances like he shared his testimony with us last evening. And uh, I can connect with, resonate with. Uh, in Jamaica, we would say the man is a man after my own order. Because I love a man who loves Jesus and who loves the mission and who has a burden for the word to go out for men and women to know of the saving grace of Jesus. I'm so happy for Pastor Kirk Thomas. And you know, he has a lovely family. That's wonderful. When I grow up, I want to be like you, Pastor Thomas. I I, I have two sons, but I want to get another one and a daughter also. Yes. <laughs> Vona and Kavona and Daniel and um, uh, Kasana. What? And, and you see, the thing about this man of God, some of us, we just sing carols at Christmas time. But he has carol right from Genesis to Revelation. And January to December, he's got Carol by his side. For over 27 years, they've been together. And so he's happy in Jesus. Amen? And I greet her as she's joining us online. And I, again, take the pleasure and privilege on behalf of my leader and the rest of the team to say welcome to Jamaica. Uh, we met from the other day at the airport, and from that he has been falling in love more and more with Jamaica. And after all the meals and all the seasons, he, he's been introduced to five seasons. Uh, I don't think he's going to leave. But I want you to know seriously that we are in for a blessing tonight again. As a man of God, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, brings us God's word one more time. God bless you richly. Brothers and sisters, our keynote speaker, Pastor Kirk Thomas, right after the musical rendition. Thank you so much. Holiness, 
Is what I long for. Righteousness is what I know I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want for me, for me. So take my heart. Is what I long for. Brokenness is what I know I need. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want for me, for me. So take my heart. together for the young people. That's just fun. And you know the thing about it is the, the, the choir director, she, she was as young as them, right? Enthusiasm, full of, of energy. Oh, praise God. Praise God. I'm so, so happy to be here again. Happy Sabbath, everybody. 
It is so good to be here. Happy Sabbath to the 1,200 plus of you online as well. You can shout back Happy Sabbath in the chat. And then there are those over in the auditorium, uh, the overflow, who are also there listening. Happy Sabbath to you as well. Let me tell you something. Tomorrow this place will not have space. People will be all over here as we bring this uh, camp meeting, uh, preaching session to a close tomorrow. I am so happy to be here again. And I was telling myself that uh, if I had to live again, um, Elder uh, Merrick, if, if I had to live again, I'll probably uh, be a Jamaican. <laughs> uh, you people are so wonderful, wonderful, hospitable. Today, uh, the pastors Bow and, and, and uh, Pastor Cottrell came all the way down from, from the Union uh, to meet me. And, um, of course, we have Pastor Schooler. And uh, between the three of them, they ensure that I saw a bit of the place. You know, we went to the park out there, the Millennium Park. That's, that's the name of it. We went out there. Um, I, I took Pastor Schooler. Is it the Millennium? Oh. Oh, the Emancipation. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. The Millenn I think I was still in England, sorry. Uh, the Emancipation Park. Emancipation Park. Uh, I, and, and you know what I did? I, I, I took Pastor Schooler on a bit of exercise around the park. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> now he's my very good friend. I could, I could do that to him. That's all right. Uh, and, then, and then we went to the Bob Marley Museum. Uh, and uh, yeah, we went, went to see, you know, what, what, and, you know, the guy there, you know, he's one of those guys who, who talk a lot of things. But, um, <laughs> but we, saw, <laughs> we saw that. And then they took me all the way to this far out place where they, a village, um, what's the village again? Port Royal, yes. Went all the way to, to Port Royal. So this was royalty from England going to Port Royal. Somebody ought to hear me here tonight. <laughs> well, we, we had a good day today to see, to see the place uh, because I leave on, on, on Sunday. So it was good to, to see the place. Again, I spoke with my family today and they send their hellos and their howdies and highs and, and everything uh, to you here in England. And again, in, in, in Jamaica. And again, thank you very much for all that you are doing and all you have done to ensure that my stay here is a, a memorable one. Thanks to the administration again for the invitation to be here. Last night I took you a little D. Oh, the, the, the singing today, I, I must comment on the singing. Now, this praise team, I, I need to take them to England. So I, 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 I started to, to look for suitcases that were big enough to put everybody inside. And, and, and then the choir, the, the men showed up, uh, and the bass man there, you, you heard the quartet, right? That bass, you know. And then the choir showed up, and I'm thinking, man, I, 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 can't, I can't get enough suitcases to carry everybody. <laughs> so I don't know what I'll do. I don't know what I'll do. But, but no, nah, you, you guys are talented here, extra, extra talented. And I pray that God will bless each one of you as you do ministry for Jesus Christ. As you do ministry for Jesus Christ. Maybe you guys need to combine and do some musical campaigns. And let me tell you something. There is nothing like music to break down barriers in a society. And, and, and you maybe have to just pull those talents together. Uh, and that's one of the programs I'm, I'm looking to do uh, in England, where you just pull the talents together and just go there in the communities and minister. Because music, there's no prejudice about music. You know, you, you go out there, you sing, and those things, those songs will win souls for Jesus Christ. So we have been going a bit deeper and deeper as we go through these meetings. And tonight will be no exception as we open the word of God. So please stand with me as I read the word of God for our message tonight. It comes from 1 Kings 9, 26 to 28. And 1 Kings 22, 48 to 50. Two magnificent passages. 1 Kings 9, 26 to 28 says, King Solomon also built ships at Ezai and Geba, which is near Elath in Edom, on the shore of the Red Sea. 
And Hiram sent his men, sailors who knew the sea, to serve in the fleet with Solomon's men. They sailed to offer and brought back 420 talents of gold, which they delivered to Solomon. 1 Kings 22, 48 to 50. Now Jehoshaphat built a fleet of trading ships to go to Orpha for gold, but they never set sail. They were wrecked at Ezai and Geba. At that time, Isaiah, son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, let my men sail with yours. But Jehoshaphat refused. Then Jehoshaphat rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, his father. And Jehoram, his son, succeeded him as king. Our message tonight, Mission Possible. Father, again we come before you to thank you for bringing us safely through another week because you have kept us. The busy streets and highways and byways, as we traverse these over the past days, you ensure that we avoided accidents and death so that we could be here tonight. And as we open up your word, we pray that you will speak to our hearts as you have done before, that you will tailor this message to meet our needs, to meet the needs of your church, to meet the needs of our individual Christian journey, to meet the needs of this mighty conference, the East Jamaica Conference, and yea, by extension, the union. And even beyond those, to those who are looking and listening online, and those who will look and listen in the future, may this message find lodgment. May this message help someone who has been wandering around, wondering what to do with their lives, to find Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And I pray, God, as I've prayed before, that if there is anything within me that will prevent this message from going forward, that you will remove it. Because there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. I'm taking that plunge tonight, God. And please forgive and let your message go forth that your people will hear your voice not mine, will see you and not me, so that you will be lifted up and draw all of us to you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. This is the story of two kings who lived 190 years apart. Solomon and Jehoshaphat. Both of these kings were ambitious. Both built their navy base at the same place, Ezai and Geba. Both had the same ambition to get to Orpha for gold. Both had the same starting point, Ezai and Geba. Both had the same destination, Orpha for gold. Both had a dream. Both started. Solomon sailors brought back almost 300,000 pounds in gold. Jehoshaphat sailors never made it out of the harbor. We may be born in the same home 
attend the same school, live in the same city, come to the same church, have the same father and mother, sit in the same Sabbath school class, be part of the same Bible study group, sing in the same choir, sing from the same hymnal, have the same water baptism, return tithe and contribute offerings, dress good, look beautiful, smell sweet with the latest fragrance, excel at university, have degrees and pedigree, but the destinations are different. Because you see, God has given us a dangerous possession called choice. And it is that possession that determines two things tonight that I want you to understand. That possession that you have that's called choice will determine whether, first of all, your life is wrecked at Ezai and Geba. And secondly, whether your church, your conference, your union, or your mission, or whatever you belong to, gets the mission done. So this message tonight is a message for all of us, as well as the institution that we represent. Choice. Now, if I was God, I would not give man choice. I will not give you cho choice. No way. Now, some of you as parents, you even want to be God. So you don't give your children choice either, you know what I'm saying? When I was growing up, man, and my mother cooked, you know, <laughs> and she cooked, and if it was rice and peas or peas and rice, depending on how you want to put it, it was peas and rice that you had to eat. There was no choice. Nowadays, my children, they come home, there is food there, but daddy, we don't like that. We want to make this, or we want to do that, or we want to bake this, or we want to do that. And I'm thinking, man, they have arrived. They have arrived. In my day, whatever was there, if it was balmy, you had to eat it. Somebody ought to hear me here. If it was cornmeal porridge, you had to eat it. If it was fried dumpling, you say, praise God. If I was God, I would not give man choice. You know why? Because mankind is ungrateful. I don't make robots, man. Come. Come back. I ought to make robots. I, but but I thank God that I am not God. And you are not God. And your pastor is not God. And your elder is not God. And the people, you are not God. You are not God. Thank God you are not God. Because God is the great unlike. He's unlike me. He's unlike you. He's unlike everybody that I know. Because God looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. Somebody say amen. God looks beyond whatever we do and sees that there is something that can happen. He looks beyond our short-sightedness and sees that there is something that you can do and helps you to do it. The mission is possible because God has made it possible. Somebody say that. Look, turn to the person next to you, man. Give them the highest five you can give them and say that the mission is possible because of God. Some of us think that a mission is possible because of us. So we strike. Oh, you, you don't know that word, right? You don't do that here. No, I'm talking about England. We strike. Somebody talks something about us. We're not doing it anymore. We resign. <laughs> We're not doing it. Somebody, no, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no, no, I'm staying away. There are some of you that are online right now. And you're watching this program, and the reason why you're online is because you're vexed with the church. So you prefer to stay home and worship. Yeah. 
Some of you are online and you're so glad that online come because you can't, you don't have the stomach to face people. You don't want to be with people. You don't want to be with the members because somebody may have talked your name or carry some news on you. And because they're the ones who are carrying you to heaven, you're vexed with the church. So you're online, away from everybody else, but you know that you should be in church. And you know that you should still be serving God. So your heart is being pulled to serve God. But you're listening to the devil instead. Choice. Choice. Let me tell you something. Those who choose to serve God and to do his mission will be rewarded. God is not slack concerning his promises. Let me tell you something. God is not slack concerning his promises. This little black boy from an obscure village in Guyana when he gave his life to Jesus with nothing, had absolutely nothing, but God took hold of him and made him what he wanted him to be. Let me tell you something. When God takes hold of your life, you will do the mission. He makes it possible. People will write you off. People will say, you can't do it. You can't make it. You can't go there. You can't accomplish this. You can't do that. No, it's impossible. But with God, somebody say amen. All things are possible. Give your name an high five and say, all things are possible with God. And my story is not the only story. I can see that story in the there. I can see it at the back there. I can see it at the back there. I can see it here. I can see it in front here. Because every one of us have a story of God taking hold of us. Oh, somebody say amen. If it wasn't for God, where would I be? If it wasn't for God, where would my life be? Let me tell you something. God showed me last night that he is about to do a new thing in this conference. God is about to do a new thing. After this camp meeting, you will see how God will move. Move in your life. Move in the life of the community. Move in the conference life. Move in the lives of the pastors and in the children and in the parents. Because God says to me, he is about to do a new thing. This camp meeting was not planned just because it was another program. It was planned because coming out of this pandemic, we have gotten lazy. Somebody say amen. Oh, it is good to roll out of your bed in your pajamas and you're into church. Hallelujah, somebody say Oh, you roll out of bed and you put on a top, but your bottom is still sleeping. Somebody say amen. The church has gotten lazy. We should be heading to Arfa for gold, but we are down in an harbor being wrecked. The mission of God is supposed to be accomplished, but we are lazy, just lazy around the place, dang by the tube, saying that, that you, that tube, that tube could meet some people, but the majority of the people are dying in sin out there. They need a human touch, somebody say amen. They need to see a face, somebody say amen. They need to have a hug, somebody say amen. Ah, help me, Jesus. They need to have a handshake, somebody say amen. They need some food, somebody say amen. You can't serve them food through the tube. God is going to do a new thing. 
God has sent me here to tell you and to let you know that the mission is possible and that the mission needs you and me personally. I can't think of Jesus just being behind a tube telling people, I love you. I can't think of Jesus just being behind a computer sending out messages saying, oh man, oh, heal, be thou healed, be thou healed. But I see Jesus stooping down in the dust of the ground and mingling his spit with the dirt and pasting it on somebody's eye because God recognizes that salvation needs a personal touch. So get up off those couches. Get out of the, the bed and find yourself where God needs you personally. Uh, you might want to be preached after this. But God give me a word for you tonight, man. He gave me a word for you tonight. And this word is not only for you, it's for me as well. So here we go with the story again. You see, the way you feel should not run your life. <laughs> you didn't hear me. You, the way you feel should not run your life. Too many of us run our lives by feelings. You get up to, oh, I don't feel like going to church. Oh, who is preaching? Ah, I heard him last week. I don't feel like going to church. Who is singing? That lady? She could not even form the words properly. I'm not going, I don't feel like going to church. What did you say? I don't feel like. A Christian should never ever allow his life to be run by feelings. Because feelings can be deceptive. Feelings can be carnal. Somebody ought to hear me here. Feeling, you, 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 Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Feelings, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. God, somebody say amen. Feelings can be carnal. Feelings can be emotional. Feelings can be of what you want. But when the dust said the Lord God clashes with feelings, the word of God must take precedence. Somebody say amen. So note very carefully here, friends, that Jehoshaphat's ships were wrecked right in the harbor, not on the high seas. They were wrecked doing nothing. Let me tell you something. When you build a ship, and a ship is supposed to sail, if any disaster happens, it was supposed to be happening on the waters out there in the Atlantic Ocean. Am I correct? A ship, except this is the ship that you build to, to just illustrate something. A proper ship is supposed to sail. Am I correct? Am I correct? And if there is going to be a disaster with that ship, it is supposed to be out there in the ocean. But Jehoshaphat's ships were wrecked in the harbor. Oh, somebody not to hear me here tonight. They were wrecked doing nothing. You see, there is a sickness called the nothing syndrome. Have you ever heard of it? Well, you're hearing it tonight. There's a sickness called the nothing syndrome. And people with this sickness, this disease, they do not accomplish anything. Have you ever called somebody and you ask them, what are you doing? Nothing. You, what do you want? Nothing. Almost like Eddie Murphy's 
supposedly bride that was prepared for him in coming to America, when he asked her the question, what do you want? She said, anything you want. And then he says, well, are you sure about that? She said, I'm sure about that. So whatever I tell you, you will do? She said, yes. So he said, well, then bark like a dog. And she began to bark like a dog. And then he said, well, bark like a dog and hop on one leg. And she was, woof, woof. And that was how her parents found her when they did not see her after a while and came looking for her in the room. By then, Eddie Murphy was gone long. You see, the nothing syndrome, people who suffer from this, they do not accomplish much in life. Churches that suffer from the nothing syndrome do not do the mission of God. There are some churches that are doing absolutely nothing. Have you, have you ever been to a place and you see people running around the place? Everybody seems to be busy. They're just running around the place, running around the place. Everybody just running around the place, running around the place. And at the end of the day, you are, well, what did you accomplish? Nothing. That's the nothing syndrome. It's a disease. And when God saved you and brought you into his light, into his presence, he did not do that so you can have a disease called a nothing syndrome. So here's the question. What have you done for God lately? How many people have you studied with lately? How many people have you spoken to about Jesus Christ lately? How many persons have you witnessed to about your life story and what God has done for you lately? And if your answer to that is no one, nothing, then you are on the brink of developing the disease called a nothing syndrome. And uh, you cannot go to your doctor to get antibiotics for it. You can't go to the village nurse to get, uh, you can't go to the OB man. Oh, you can't go to anybody. The only person who you can go to is Dr. Jesus. And when you go, he will prescribe something for you called mission. And mission, you know, some people, you want to go and do mission in America. You want to go all over the place, Africa. You want to go some remote place. God, he's not going to prescribe that to you. He's going to prescribe to you, just go over the road and talk to your neighbor. He's going to say, go down into that ghetto and talk to people. He's going to say, go up on that hill and talk to somebody. He's going to say, develop a program that can help children. He's going to tell you what to do, but it's not going to be nothing. You might be quiet on me now, Pastor. Mighty quiet on me. You're getting vexed with me now. Mighty quiet on me. Because what I'm doing here, I'm bringing it home. So, so what is it therefore about our choices that will make uh, Solomon go to offer on a mission and bring back gold and Jehoshaphat who planned for a mission be wrecked in the harbor doing nothing? Why are some people, I told you that this sermon is going to be on two levels as I take you deeper, on your personal level and on the level of the church, so we can pull all together, so we can do mission for the church, and we can do mission for ourselves as well, because some of us, we need to understand that God did not make us to be failures. The devil have told you a lie that you are a failure, but you're not. I came to liberate you tonight. Somebody say amen. Some of you have low self-esteem. Some of you are shy. Some of you have not accomplished much because you've never dared much. Some of you have started stuff that you never finished. Some of you have started businesses that you never finished, that you never were able to run successfully. Some of you have just been all over the place. And let me tell you something. 
Now, one thing that God uh, struggles with is people who are just all over the place not doing anything. What God wants from you is that you must be able to focus on the mission for yourself as well as for the church. So, watch this. Stay with me tonight. Stay with me tonight. Why are some people successful and others don't get off the ground? Let's explore the word of God. Because in life, you've got to contemplate your reality. Jehoshaphat built his reality upon Solomon's reality. Jehoshaphat read about Solomon 190 years apart. And he decided to be a copycat. Now, it's all right to be a copycat. But you need to be aware of which cat you copy. No, no, you didn't get me. <laughs> you know, you know, all these karaoke singers, they're copycats. They want to song and sing like the people who sang the songs. But you got to be careful who cat you copy. What cat you copy. Because if you copy the wrong cat, you will end up in serious trouble. So let's therefore look <laughs> at ship as a metaphor for life. We have one here. Ship as a metaphor for life. Let's begin with S. Everybody say S. And S means that you need to be specific. So everybody say, be specific. I'm teaching you now, be specific. You see, you've got to be specific. What is it that you're planning to do with your life? What is it that you're planning to be? What career path are you planning to pursue? Why am I going on the personal level first, Dr. Walker? Is because if we are chaotic in our personal lives, then the mission of the church becomes chaotic as well. What is it that you plan to do with your life? There are some people who are just lazing around, just, just drifting around, just, just eating and uh, uh, just not doing anything with your life. And sometimes young men fall in that category. Lots of young men who are not doing anything much. But I'm not talking to you here. I'm talking to people from somewhere else. If you're going to be planning a mission for the church, you've got to be specific as to what you will be doing. And then you gear all your energies to do that. When, when Solomon was building that ship, those ships to go to Orpha for gold, he was specific. He was going to Orpha for gold. And he would not be distracted by anything else that Orpha had to offer. If you are planning to do mission in the community, do not be distracted by the politics. Do not be distracted by what people say or what people think. Do not be distracted by fights and, and all kinds of stuff. You are planning to do mission. Get out there and do the mission. Somebody say amen. Be specific. Ship as a metaphor for life. The H means harbor. Find out what it will take to get you out of the harbor. In your personal life, find out what it will take to get you to be the doctor that you always wanted to be. The lawyer, the teacher, to get the business that you always wanted to run so you can pay tithes and offerings to the church. I hope you do when you get successful. Find out what it will take to get you to where you want to be. 
If you're going to be doing a mission, and you should be doing a mission in the community, I'll tell you there's a new thing coming. You've got to do a mission in the community. Find out what it will take to get you into that community and to do that stuff. Do your research. Check it out. And you're not doing that so you will be discouraged, but you're doing that so you will be informed. Uh, somebody, somebody's hearing me tonight. Are you hearing me tonight? Am I making sense tonight? Now tell me if I'm not making sense, you know, I'll stop. Find out what it will take to get you out of the harbor. Because what it will take to get you out of the harbor is what you actually need to do. What is it? that you need? How do you need to move? What resources you will need to get stuff done? Find out what it will take to get you out of the harbor. When you find that out, the nothing syndrome has nothing left on you. Because the nothing syndrome is for people who don't know what they're doing. And so they do absolutely nothing. So find out what it will take to get you out of the harbor. You know, we have some ancestors who fought the slave owners. And they had to have a plan. They didn't just run away into the mountains, the blue mountains, the best and well-known, most well-known mountains in the whole world, the blue mountains. They didn't just, they had a plan. What they will do. So you may be unhappy in your present situation because you're failing to get out of the harbor. There's some folk who don't have job satisfactions, folk who come to church every Sabbath, they're vexed. Uh, there are elders who wanted to be pastors but never got out of harbor. Uh, there are many people messed up because they are in the wrong profession and others because they have made bad choices. Find out what it will take to get you out of the harbor. See, one of the things that you have got to be careful about is harbor people. There are harbor people in every walk of life. They harbor people who sit on the church board. They, they, they harbor people who sit on the executive committees where the decisions have to be made. They, they, they harbor people, some of you have friends who are harbor people. Who are harbor people? Harbor people are people who will always try to pull you down in the harbor and get your ship wrecked before you can even leave. Uh, let me tell you something. Have you ever spoken to somebody and said, you know, man, look, I have this plan. That, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this business. And, and, and here's it. And, 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 and they say, are you sure? You can't do that. Where are you going to get the money from? Harbor people. They want to pull you down before you can get anything. I can remember, I can remember when we, we, we were about to buy a house uh, in England. It was an impossible task to get that house. When we got to England, my wife was heavily pregnant. We got there in November. Uh, my second daughter was born on the 4th of January, the next year. My wife decided that she was going to stay and, and look after her. And then uh, she came uh, to me one day and said, you know what, I'm pregnant again. And I said, Lord, help us. So the boy was born the next. I told you, they called me the most prolific man in England. The next year, boy was born. So my wife made the sacrifice to stay home with the kids. And, to, and if you ever lived in England or ever passed through there, you can know that England, uh, the United Kingdom is one of the hardest economies in the first world countries. Tough. So when I want to buy a house, they said, um, I want to buy this house. I told a couple of people, they said, never. Yo, you're going to do that? Your wife not working? You working as a pastor and a pastor's salary. 
there is, how are you going to find the money? You will need to have a deposit. You, how are you going to do it? You can't do that. You need to wait. Wait until your wife starts to work. Wait until this and that and that. And I'm looking at them and thinking, harbor people. Harbor people, bro. Don't tell them your plans. Harbor people. So I said, I'm going for it, man. So there was this development that was happening and so on, and they drove around there. Another pastor's wife accompanied me and said, come, let's check it out. We went, check it out. And they said, oh, there's this broker. You need to call this broker, and he will give you the help that you need because this broker, that form is responsible for getting the, the loans and, and all of that. So I called the guy. Didn't listen to the harbor people. When I called the guy, the guy said, he said, what's your name? I told him my name. He said, what's your date of birth? I gave him the date of birth. He said, wait. He said, give me that date of birth again. I gave him the date of birth. He said, but hey, hold on. We were born the same day, the same year, the same month. Somebody say amen. He said, if I don't get a mortgage for anybody else, I've got to get it for you because you are my brother. Now watch this. This guy, I, I, am, I am really, really, really black. You look at me, man. I'm black. And he is opposite to me. We didn't meet until about three or four years after the deal was done. We never saw each other. We communicated on the phone and on email. And yet, he remained my brother and saw me through the process. Somebody say man, With one salary. And when I told the harbor people, man, they said, oh my God, you are good. Your faith is strong. I wish I had faith like you. I said, mm-hmm. Church, let me tell you something. There is nothing impossible that this church of God cannot do. There is nothing impossible that you cannot accomplish because you have got God on your side. Somebody say amen. The God who owns all the ATM machines, the God who owns all the banks, the God who owns not only the cattle on a thousand hills, but he owns the hills as well. Somebody say amen. The God we serve owns all the villages. And, and all the ghettos and, and all the communities here in Jamaica and that God is large and in charge and he's no pure pure God he is great somebody say amen so mission is possible turn to somebody and say mission is possible so get away from harbor people man Because harbor people, I can remember harbor people caused us to lose a larger complex. We were looking for an office and God brought this large complex and dumped it into our lap. It was a Sanyo building that... that <laughs> that had everything they had so much big screen televisions and and and, and so many so much furniture that the churches would have gotten a whole lot it that just dumped it in our lap for a course that was rock bottom we had the money two times three times over and harbor people sat on that committee for one year in every meeting, I'm getting righteously indignant. And if you don't understand what it is, I was vexed. Because I'm seeing a big God with a big hand giving us a gift. And harbor people, one year, when harbor people decided that it was that they had enough and they wanted now to punish uh, the church enough and they wanted now to say yes go buy the building when they said yes and they went the treasurer went the monday 
The people said, we just sold it the Friday. After one year, they came back to me and they said to all of us and said, oh, let us pray that God will, 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 will return it to us. I said, me? Pray? I'm, I'm praying for my family. You guys are foolish. Harbor people. Let me tell you something. If you are a horrible person here today, you better turn it over to God so that you can get out of that harbor and live for Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Because let me tell you, with or without you, this mission will be accomplished because this is God's mission. Somebody say amen. And God will see it true. And when you don't make it, you will be vexed. We got an eye for the ship. I don't want to keep you too long tonight. I'm going to just cut this short in righteousness. The eye in the ship is individual. You need to be comfortable in your own skin. Because jealousy is a bad thing. There is too much jealousy in the church. Too much jealousy. I don't know why we are fighting. I don't know what, why we're jealous of each other. I don't know why we're jealous of people's position when people are elected, nominated, voted. I don't know why if God has given you a mission, why are you jealous about somebody else? You saw what jealousy did to the disciples and how God's church was almost destroyed. And until they came together on the day of Pentecost, when they were in one accord and in one place, and the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them, only then did the church of God move forward. But they wasted three and a half years with Jesus just fighting. You can imagine how soon a Pentecost would have come. So what if you're not made president? Is that salvation? Is that heaven? When I get to heaven, would the president have a bigger mansion than me? When I die, would I have a bigger casket than... Oftentimes in football, you see the managers point to their head and, and, and the players and say, think, it's not worth it. We carry people wrong in our minds. We vex for years. I could remember once I was in a campaign in, in the United Kingdom and when I finished preaching, I preached about heaven. When I was finished preaching, the, the man came to me. And he said, Pastor, oh God, I love this sermon. I want to go to heaven. But he said, you know that man? And he called a certain pastor name. He said, I hate him. I hate him. And for the next half an hour, I stayed there listening as he belched out this and that and that and the other and the other and the other and the other. And from my knowledge, the pastor had not done him anything. The pastor made a decision. And he took it. And, and for years, he was walking around with a heavy 250 pound man on his chest. And with every step, he was going down. And down because when you carry people on your mind and carry people on your back, you're weighing yourself down, you're developing arthritis, you're developing heart problems, stress, strain, all kinds of things you're carrying, diabetes, your health is going down, you're bitter about life, bitter about stuff, and the person is happy and dancing, going about their business because as far as they're concerned, you can go to hell. They are happy. And you weighing yourself down. Oh, I hate him. I hate him. You're going down to hell. I hate him. Come on, brethren. There is more to life than this. There is more to the mission of the church than this. 
The mission of the church is not about being an officer in the church. The mission of the church is about doing what God says you should do. Go seek and save the lost. So be comfortable in your own skin. And I'm just going to throw this in for young people because I've got to wrap this. I'm going to cut this short. Let me tell you. Once I get the ship, I'm going to, the P, I'm going to finish. Let me tell you. Some of you, young people, and some of you ladies, and some of you men, you're not comfortable in your own skin because you think that you don't look good. You think that your hair is too short. You think that your nose is too big. Well, I had a nose, I have a big nose. You know, when I was going to school, because of the darkness and smoothness of my skin, they called me all kinds of things. They called me black and shine, multiplied by 99. They called me big nose, big head, big ears, and what, look at my ears, how small it is. They call me all kinds of things to derail me from the mission that God has given me in life. And then when I became a Seventh day Adventist, they call me seven devil, seven devils, seven this, seven that, seven everything that they can find derogatory to call me. But every time they called me, every time they said seven devils, every time they say that, I would add seven more years to my time with God. Every time they said it, my nose is too big I would say praise the Lord thank you Jesus hallelujah because when God was sharing nose I went early somebody say amen I would say when my nose because my nose is big I could smell a rat I could smell you from a long way off I could smell a fraud from a long way off let me tell you something you've got to be comfortable in your own skin because you are unique you are the best of the best. Somebody say amen. Praise God. The best of the best. Don't let nobody pull you down. Let nobody bring some derogatory thing to you. You need to lift up your head. Somebody say amen. And praise the Lord for who you are. Because there is nobody like you in this world. Dr. Merrick, sorry, man. I gotta, I gotta wrap this up, man. Uh, the P, the P in this ship is a punctual. The P in the ship is a punctual. You have got to set a time to sail to offer for gold. Punctual. Now, there are some of you young men who like to fool around, you know, the young ladies and so on, you know. You have this girlfriend and you're going around with her. You're courting her for five years. And you're not proposing. Now, if, if that was my daughter, I will tell her, she comes to me, I'll say, just leave that guy. He is a waste of time. Five years? What are you waiting? What are you looking to see? Five years? Seven years. Dr. Merrick, they're not punctual. There are some of you who are planning to do a business. Some of you are planning to study, but you're not starting. You're not being punctual. What are you waiting on? And let me bring it home now. There are some of us who are planning to start our personal devotions, but you have always been planning to start, but we are not starting. Signs of the times are everywhere. We see war and hear of rumors of war. We see people dropping dead every now and then, people that we know. We see diseases and disasters and earthquakes and all of these signs. And the thing is it, what, what gets us comfortable often is because we are accustomed to seeing these things and Jesus Christ has not burst the azure skies to come and take us home. So we get comfortable. But you know what the Bible says? That when we see these things in rapidity, Jesus Christ is on his way. Way. So you have got to get punctual with doing the stuff that will help you to get to heaven. 
Some of you are not getting any family devotions because you're busy working. And your children are growing, out, growing up without a sense of God. Some of you are depending on the church to be the ones to teach your children when you have all the time with them and they only come here for a few hours. Somebody ought to hear me here today. You, some of you, uh, husbands and wives, you're not praying together. How you intend to be together. How you intend to be closely. You're not praying together. You're not studying together. You're not doing anything together. All you're meeting, the only time you meet together is for couple of seconds to do yada and that lasts for a couple of seconds some of you guys you know machine gun and that's it you're not doing anything else together how you intend to be married for 20 years 25 years 30 years 40 years how are you gonna make it And now I bring it home to the church. The mission of the church is a mission that is ongoing. There is no rest in the mission of the church. When you see Jesus, when you read about Jesus, you hear and you see of a man who was always on the go. He fasted and prayed, got up early in the morning, worked from morning till night, got some rest, prayed again, and went on and on doing the mission of the church. The Bible says at one time he was even tired and he went into a boat to get some rest and the people found him and he ministered to them. So when are you going to start in that community that you ought to start in? When are you going to plan that program that you know you ought to plan? Here's this. I want to tell you this now because I don't know if I'll remember to tell you again. There are some churches that we emphasize these days, you know, these fancy days. We have men's day and women's day. And all we do is we plan a nice program in church and then we go and eat a lot of food and we have the day. Hear my take on the day. You want to do a men's day? Go out in the community, stick a tent up there or get a hall or something and invite all the men in the community to the program and do a men's day out there. That's a men's day. You want to do a women's day and all you do is a dress up fancy and looking nice and cute? Well, you don't have to get a day for that because you guys look nice and cute and fancy and beautiful every day. So if your husband didn't tell you that, I'm now telling you. <laughs> every day you look beautiful. Well, dress up fancy, go into that community, invite all the women from the community and do the women's day there. Talk about breast cancer and all these things out there. Our churches are becoming a place where we meet, eat, burp, greet, and leave. And nobody is being impacted. I told you, God is going to do a new thing. God is going to do a new thing, but you've got to allow him to do it. And so here we go. Here we go. God is going to do a new thing, man. So don't fear to see, don't try to delay, don't be scared of failure. Don't let your ship be sucked into the harbor. Don't hook up with the wrong people because your ship could be wrecked in the harbor not doing the mission. The church could be fighting and confusion in the church because there is no mission going on in the church. Right at Isai and Geba, when you were supposed to be sailing to offer for gold, your ships are wrecked right here. The beautiful ships, all the money you spend and all the decorations and everything, wrecked, not doing the mission of the church. Watch this. Watch this text. 
In 1 Kings 2.27, Then Hiram sent his servants with a fleet, seamen who knew the sea, to work with the servants of Solomon. Solomon hooked up with the right people. In contrast, Jehoshaphat hooked up with wickedness. In 2 Chronicles 20, 35 to 37, he hooked up with Isaiah. This guy was a wicked guy. When you hook up with the wrong people, you make the wrong choices, you make the wrong decisions, and you don't do mission as it ought to be. So here I am on the home stretch. In the same way, not everybody is going to offer <clears throat> for gold. Not every church is going there either. You see, just as how a ship is a metaphor for life, I can use a ship as a metaphor for the church as well. So tighten your seat belts. Here we go. You see, there is the cruise ship church. The cruise ship church is just having a good time. They're having fun. It's a place where people meet, eat, burp, and leave. You know, the cruise ship. You know what a cruise ship does? It cruises. Anybody been on a cruise here? Everybody been on a cruise here? Oh, no, no, you have not been on a cruise. But a cruise ship, you saw the big ones that were coming to Kingston Harbor, and people go on cruise all over. They take it easy and nice, so the church is just cruising. And then you have the submarine church. The submarine church, they are in the water, but you can't see them. The building is in the community, but you can't see them. They're there, but there's no ministry happening. Because why? They're undercover. Undercover lover. Mm. Undercover. Nobody is seeing them. The church is there, the building, they see the building, but the building is not doing anything for the community. The submarine church. And then there's a tugboat church. You see, the tugboat is a, 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 a boat that travels very slow. The church is barely making it. They do not return a faithful tithe. They have to beg for everything. They are always sick and suffering, holding on to their backs and struggling, struggling to pray, struggling with spirituality, struggling with the devil. Whenever you talk to them, they say, oh, pastor, the devil is on my back. What are you doing with the devil on your back? The devil is on my back. Oh, Lord, and he wants to turn me back. But he's there. But they're struggling with everything. That's the talk boat church that's struggling. And then there's the warship church. The warship church, they are always fighting. Deacons fighting, elders fighting, church board fighting, children fighting, fighting over food, paint, and carpets. Always fighting, preachers fighting, elders, folk not talking to each other, backstabbing and disrespecting each other, would not fight sin, they would not fight the devil, but always fighting each other. Do you know any warship church? And then there's a sailboat church. That, that is a church that goes with the wind. Wherever the wind is blowing, that's where the church is going. Whatever is popular, that's what the church is doing. So anything that comes in, the church says, yes, Father, that is true. And they just do it. They incorporate it into their worship. They do everything. Because why? They're sailing. This is a sailboat church. Come on board. And we are sailing. We don't know where we are going, but we are sailing. We don't know how we're going to get there, but we are sailing. We don't know what to do, but we are sailing. Sailboat church. But a church that I want you to be and the conference that I want you to be and the person that I want you to be is the aircraft carrier church person or conference. You know what an aircraft carrier is. It has a long flight the flat deck for the aircraft to land and as they land there they land for one purpose only that is to refuel and to hit the skies again on the mission somebody say man that if you are the church that's going to offer for goal you have got to be a aircraft carrier church the aircraft carrier church every week they touch down and they refuel to hit the sky again you come every week to hear the word, to sing praises. Somebody say amen. You do some praying and you're on your way to offer again. Every week you come 
You see the brethren, you hug them, you give them a holy kiss, you sing together. Somebody ought to hear me here. You read the word together, you listen to dynamic preaching, and you're on your way again to do mission because mission is possible. The song says, Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and you gave amazing grace. Oh, tonight, friends, our mission can only be possible because Jesus made it possible. And tonight I'm talking to somebody. I don't know who you are. You could be online. You can be here. You can be in the auditorium, wherever you are. I'm talking to you because God wants to use you in his mission. Individually, we make up the church of God. And when we come collectively, we become the power of God. Somebody say amen. We bring our individual power and praise and prayer and commitment to this body, this aircraft carrier church that's ready to hit the sky with the mission of God. And so I want you to make a personal commitment tonight that you, everybody standing, everybody standing, everybody standing, that you will be the person that will make a commitment to the mission of God. Tonight, I'm also talking to some of you online, in this church, wherever you are, maybe young people who have never been baptized as well. God needs you in his mission. But he needs you to be committed to that mission. And baptism is one of those commitments that you make to the mission of God. When I give my life to Christ, immediately, the church did not wait for me to tore off, as we say. The church said, you come. There is work to be done. Here, be an assistant Sabbath school teacher. Here, help in the deaconary department. The church introduced me to mission at an early stage. And that's why I'm still doing mission today. So God wants you. God wants you whether you're baptized or you're not. God wants you to be a missionary for him. And tonight I want you to make that commitment wherever you are, online or wherever you are. So first of all, I want to call you to this altar. Everybody will come to the altar. And you're coming to this altar saying, Jesus, you died for me. Your forgiveness and your embrace. Your name is worthy. Somebody say that. Come on to the altar. And make that commitment that you're going to be a missionary for God. Let's come. Everybody, leave your seat wherever you are. Those of you can just step forward to the balcony. Let's make a commitment tonight. Don't be shy. Just come to the altar. Come on. Come on. Let's make a commitment. to your screen that you're making that commitment as well. Come on, everybody. Thank you for this love, Lord. Sing it if you know it, everybody. Sing it if you know it. Jesus died for us. He could have 
have returned to heaven and forget about us. But he stayed in the course. Stayed in the course. make a call for those who are not yet baptized. If you're here tonight and you're not yet baptized and you want to say, Pastor, I need a special prayer. I need power. I need to make a decision for Jesus. I know this. I've been around. I've studied. I've been in the church. I've backslidden. Maybe you're backslidden from church. You've not been here a long time. You're online here, wherever. And you want to say, Pastor, the times are serious this covid has taught me that life is short and i need to make my salvation sure in jesus if you are that tonight wherever you are tonight online here in the church at the balcony and you want to say pastor pray for me because i want to be baptized direct call to you why don't you raise your hands is there anybody like that here tonight anybody like that here tonight not yet baptized not yet baptized maybe even visiting this camp meeting for the first time and the word of god has touched you maybe you have grown up in the church but never made that final step that final commitment is there anybody like that here tonight who want to say pastor now i don't know you i don't know who you are but i want to talk to you tonight to give your life to jesus online put it in the chat say i want to be baptized pastor we will be praying for you they are monitoring those conversations there again as well so we know who you are and we will be in contact with you is there anybody here in this auditorium in the auditorium outside wherever that you want to say pastor pray for me i want to be baptized i want to give my life to jesus christ I want to know him and have life eternal. I want to go to heaven because we're going to walk on streets of gold there. Is there somebody today? Okay, we have a, a young man here. Praise God. Somebody say amen. Is there anybody else today who want to say, I want to give my life? Is there a hand I see somewhere there? Anybody else here today? Just, just, just give me a quick wave. Give me a wave so we will know. There are people looking here for me as well to see who you are so that we can be able to talk with you after these meetings are over. Is there anybody here tonight? Anybody here tonight? Final call. Final call. Anybody here tonight? Final call. If you go home tonight and, and, and God, I know, will talk to you, you can come back here tomorrow and you can make that decision tomorrow as well so you can be baptized. So talk to God. Talk to God tonight. I know there are some of you here. I know there are some of you online. I know there are some people who are listening to me. You know that you need to make that commitment, a recommitment to God. Some of you have wandered far away from God, but somebody invited you to come here tonight to listen to this message, to make a decision for Christ. And God wants to give you that opportunity to do so. Even as we sing the final stanza there and then to pray. Is there somebody here? Is there anybody here? Somebody here tonight who want to say, Pastor, pray for me because I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Even as they sing, even as they sing, you can raise your hands. You can say something. Tell your neighbor, tell somebody next to you that you need to talk with Pastor because you're not yet baptized. 
talk to somebody next to you if you're shy to raise your hand. And we will know and we will pray for you. Talk to somebody next to you. Sing it, everybody. Sing it. Worth it. decisions, those who are struggling, those who are online, wherever they are, God knows your heart, but he wants to save you. And even after we are finished here tonight, you can come privately, talk to one of the pastors, talk to me, talk to somebody, but don't leave here tonight in indecision. Don't leave here tonight going to your home thinking that there's going to be tomorrow because only God knows about tomorrow. You don't know about tomorrow. So may God bless you. Pastor, pray for us. And especially pray, remember this young man here as well. Let us pray. I was drifting away on life's pitiless sea when the old ship of Zion came sailing my way. Tonight, Dear God and our Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Because somebody who you have died for on Calvary's cross has been rescued tonight. Thank God for the old ship of Zion. Thank God for your man servant who gives the trumpet a certain sound souls are sinking in the sea of sin and you have sent your angels you have sent your rescuers your lifeguard through your word through your man's servant evangelist Kirk Thomas who has answered your call and we thank you, O oh God, for the result. Because your children, we have come. We have said, Lord, we have sinned against you. We thank you tonight for this altar. And we say, I surrender all to Jesus. I surrender. Dear God, 
Tonight as we stand in your physical temple, some of us are online, but we come to you in penitence. We come to you in humility. We come to you with broken spirit, oh God. We come to you for healing. For no one else can heal us but you. So Father, hear us. We pray. We believe. Help thou the unbelieving and the doubting ones who may be saying tonight, but, but, I, I, I am having this difficulty. I am having that difficulty. But so, but that, oh God, help us to realize that you say we should come as we are. We can't save ourselves. All we need to do is to come as we are, casting all our cares upon you because you care for us. You love us. That's why you've brought us here. We just need to hold on to you by faith and surrender everything to you. So dear God, we leave. I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as we come to you, as we come in faith, that we leave ourselves in your capable hands because you are God and you care and you're here. Remember little, this little boy who's here, young Brother Taylor, he decides to follow you. He wants to be like you. Thank you for children. God, they are so honest. They are so upright. No wonder you took a child when you were preaching on a certain day and you let that child stand in the midst of you and said, anybody who is like this little child tonight, he shall inherit the kingdom of God. Thank you for children who many times set the pace for us because they have heard the call and they come honestly. Tonight, oh God, give us the heart and the prayer and the determ determination of children. They're not looking back what's going to happen tomorrow or later, but they come now. And so now, God, Bless us all, all those who have not made their decision as yet to be baptized. Tomorrow, there will be a big baptism. Tonight, they come. Tonight, they made that decision. Don't worry about what will happen. Give your life to Jesus, and he will do the rest. That's all we need to do. God is capable. He's a big God. So we come to you. Bless us and hear us. We thank you for hearing. We thank you for blessing us. The rest of us who are members of a church who need to recommit our lives. Many of us are on, traveling in the submarine. We're traveling on the cruise ship. We're traveling, oh God, on the warship. Problems fighting for position and other things. May we tonight realize that the old ship of Zion is a ship of mission. To go into all the world. I will go. And in my own way. Preach your word. So that Kingston. So that East Jamaica Conference. Will complete its mission. Bless the leaders. The president and all the other officers. And all the members of your church. Thank you God for your word tonight. Thank you God for the revival that we experience. May it not just be a feeling. But may we move into action. Take us home safely now and bring us back tomorrow, we pray in Jesus' name. God sees your request. Cindy Thompson. Paulette Patterson. Jehovah sees. He Jehovah knows. knows. Don't give up. Don't give up. Amen. Your recommitment is on its way. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. 
East Jamaica Camp Meeting Season yes. 2022, Episode 3, mm. has gone down mm. in mm. eternity. But hold on there now, Pastor. Which ship are you on? Well, ship number six, the aircraft carrier ah, ship. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm right beside uh -huh. you as the co-pilot. You know what? I just touched down this evening, yes. and my ship has been refueled. Amen. I'm out of the arbor. What Praise about you? Lord. I'm Amen. out of the arbor. You're online. You're out of the arbor. Just put it in the chat. I'm out of the arbor because I'm going to be sailing. With the mission of God. Working for Jesus Christ. Working for Jesus. Yes. Working for Jesus. The evangelist said, God is about to do a new thing, but you have to allow him to do it. Hmm. You know Ruth. what? Let me tell you something, Pastor. It's not just that, you know. So when he told me about the nothing syndrome. Mercy. I got Mercy. weak in my knees. Mercy. You know, you know what got me, Ruth? Yes. You know what got me? Tell me. Jehovah's ship yes. was Did wrecked. Not. Yes, right there. On the harbor. Right there. Hey, listen, you're online and you're in church. Hear me carefully. Mm -hmm. I'd rather, I'd rather wear out for God than rust out. Yes. Amen. Love that. I love I'm that. I'm having I a good time that. at Camp Meet in 2022, yes. Ruth. So, brothers this and is sisters, episode three. Leave here charged, supercharged mission for Christ this evening. Don't let this opportunity pass tonight before you go to your bed. Oh, yes. Tell somebody about the Leave love of God. the arbor. Yes. Leave the arbor. Yes. Say that one more time, Ruth. Leave the harbor. Get out of the arbor and Left get sailing. Harbor. That's why yes. we have. Yes. That's why we have camp meeting 2022. 22. Remember, mission first, navigating the end time. It was a joy being with you this evening once more. Announcements, Ruth. Well, the pastor started it, you know. He said, you can't feed. No, you can't. What was it again about you? you? Let me find it back. Let me find it back. Can't serve food True. through tube. Mercy. But we can serve food in the wow. BH Percy wow. Hall. Say that again, but you can serve food where? In the BH Percy Hall. So if you are in the sanctuary and you're feeling a little on the weak side and you need some refreshment, please make your way over. Go on there. over before you go home, man. You didn't there get your you portion earlier. Go and get it now. And, and we, come time, back. What, what we come what, back. We come back tomorrow morning. What time? Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. No, 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 no. If you come here at 9 o'clock, you're going to be late. Oh, you might not get any seats. Yes. That's true. That's true. You have to come very early, okay? Yes. And online, just be careful that the numbers are too or many for you to join. So join <laughs> us early. We invite you to come back tomorrow when we shall have episode number four. And it's going to be epic. God be with yes. you tonight. And have a good night. Ruth, your last words to the people. Mission first. Amen. Praise Steve.